best manner in order to tighten them down. Okay, we're just putting everything in just hand tight now so nothing falls apart. Okay, I'm just making sure that the chain guides are not obstructed or bound in any kind of way. And now we can safely spin around the motor without it coming apart on us, as it did uh, in the last segment. These are just hand tied on there, it's not going to hurt nothing. We can make sure everything's good to go before the, finally fa the final fastening process. Alright, so I have my hand on the flywheel. That's good. Have my hand on the exhaust side. And it looks like everything's in order. I don't hear anything binding up. Valves are moving. I'm listening. You can hear the squish. And then we got good sealing. And that's pretty much all I can do to check that right now. Let's put it back in top dead center. Again, checking up that everything matches up. It should be. Okay. And that's it right there. Okay, reset the camera. We're going to now begin to tighten down the cylinder and the head to the case. On page 5-10, it details the proper sequence for tightening down these bolts. One, two, three, four, five, and then six. The cylinder head bolts must be tightened down to 8.7 foot-pounds, and the cylinder head nuts is 15.9 foot-pounds. So we're going to go ahead and make our adjustments onto our, our torque wrench. We're going to go ahead and begin tightening those down. Again, as you tighten these down, you want to do them in half increments until you get them all snug. So I'll just do a half a quarter. Whatever you choose, just make sure it's the same. Mop in for about a quarter. Stuck. Back up to one, two, three, four. Now, one thing I wanted to mention uh, is this is a 3 8 drive. They sell sockets that have um, a 5 millimeter uh, Allen key, hex key. Uh, end to it, that is what you're going to want to use. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have all my tools here uh, because of the move, so I'm having to use this. But to tighten down these Allen ones, you're going to want to get that adapter that goes to the 5 h drive and has one of these ends on it. Okay, go to your hardware store. If you don't know what you're looking for, find somebody that'll point you in the right direction. So, one. Three. 
that's four. It's a pain to get in there with this. But again, I'm just simulating, so. Okay. First one is wrist torque. Give it another click. Number two is reach torque. Three. There we go. Where are we at? Here we go. <clears throat> and this problem child right here, we'll say it's reached torque. Okay. Now we've evenly put the same amount of pressure on this header, which is going to heat up and get extremely hot, and then cool, and then heat up again. Uniform pressure throughout. It's tight on this side. What you can cause it to do is it tilts your whole assembly. We're talking just millimeters here, but over a period of time, you're going to wear out your rings on one side. It's going to get hotter on one side. It's going to cause it to warp, and then you're going to have all kinds of leaking and crazy issues. It's best to go ahead, get the expense. I mean, you already spent several hundred dollars upgrading to a larger piston and all the latest, greatest uh, header excuse me, uh, cam and components, so you might as well go ahead and go out and get all the right tools to make sure that it lasts forever. Okay, I got several thousand miles on my uh, 162 install, and I'm completely happy with it. But you got to take the time we have here is a spring-loaded device to keep tension on your chain as it wears out, so that none of the, the chain does not come free from either end of the crank or the sprocket. We're going to be using a new gasket, of course. And here's our timing chain tensioner. We're on page 5-11 of the service book. Again, this is only it is a gasket that can only be installed one way. Find out which way that is. <clears throat> what you're going to want to do so that this thing can work properly is go ahead. Now, this this bolt here is under pressure from a spring on the inside, so you want to hang on to it very carefully and try not to lose any of the assemblies as it comes out. There's also an O-ring on top. If that is damaged in any way, go ahead and replace it. You also notice that there's a gate on this side. What you're going to do is you're going to trip that gate, allowing, excuse me, trip that gate and allow it to this to slide in. I'm just playing with it, you'll figure it out. Okay. So let's go ahead and reinstall this component. And there it goes. We're just going to put our bolts back in here, which need to be tightened down to 6.5. Again, I only have a uh, regular Allen key set. You're going to want to go ahead and whatever size torque driver you're using, get the 5 millimeter adapter for it. You're going to want to torque all anything having to do with the head, the case, or the cylinder. You definitely want to torque down the spec. Some of the other stuff you can get away with, but when it comes to this, it's got to be right. Okay, so now we're going to put our assembly back in. And you're going to hear it ratchet up.
There you go. It is pushing down on the chain guide, the plastic chain guide on top. And it is applying tension to the chain. And it's timing chain tensioner. Squeeze it, right?